Hey guys and girls, Hugh Coscoel here with your Lake Conroe Bass Fishers Report. Today is November 29th. This report's going to go out on Friday, December 1st. Um, if you guys are new subscribers, thank you guys so much. I appreciate if you guys have uh, stayed with me for a little bit. I still appreciate you guys. Um, got my boat for sale. I know Christmas is coming up. Maybe somebody wants to buy a boat or something like that. Maybe for their son. Maybe tell your wife, hey, buy this kid's boat. Um, it's a 2022 Phoenix 921 Elite. Pretty much just a very similar boat to the one I have right now that you see in the videos. Um, 67,000. Got my Lake Conroe uh, fishing hotspot SD card that you guys can just buy that SD card from me. I'll mail it to you with everything you need. Buy it for your brand of fish finder. You plug it right into your fish finder and it'll bring up a lot of the waypoints that I fish. 125, 250, or 375 waypoints. Those are the waypoints that I fish with now. I don't fish any of the other waypoints. These are the ones that I have on my fish finder. Uh, it's a lot of deep spots. Um, not as much kind of shallow spots because that can change every year and daily. Sometimes they're at the front of the creek. Sometimes they're at the back of the creek. Some years there's grass. Sometimes there's not. The water level changes a lot. But, so mainly kind of offshore stuff. Um, there's rock and stuff on there as well. Uh, but you guys get fishing report 10. That's the discount code for you guys. I'll put that on the screen in the description below. You guys can go check that out on my website or on fishingmapcards.com. This fishing report is brought by Mealy Marine. Um, if you guys need any electronics, I know Christmas is coming up. Like I said, if you guys need any electronics, troll motors, power poles, anything boat related, fenders, life jackets, uh, rub rails, literally anything for boats, he sells at mealymarine.com. And if you guys are around here, uh, want to get your boat serviced, 100 hour service, 300 hour service, winterized, or install all this stuff, um, check them out at mealymarineservices.com. I appreciate everything that they do for me. So let's get into it. Let's talk about kind of the lake conditions, water temperature, and kind of what's been going on, and then we'll get into the patterns. So right off the bat, water temperature is actually pretty cold. Um, 62, 60 kind of more today. Um, I, I've seen, I've gone into a couple spots where in 59, maybe 58, but I'm going to probably say 60. We're going to get some rain. Um, I never know if that's going to kind of warm up the water, or cool it off. Um, but then next week it's supposed to warm up a little bit, uh, just a tiny bit. So maybe I'd say for the next week or so, I'd probably be okay saying with that 60, 60 degree range. Water clarity is actually really, really good. It's a lot clearer than it usually is. Um, I'm up north right now. You can see in the background. Um, I've seen color of the bottom in like three, four, five feet even. Um, even down south today, I was still seeing probably like two feet into the water. So it's a lot clear. Uh, I don't know if that's because there's kind of grass growing up all over the lake. We haven't had a little bit of rain in, uh, in a while. So water is pretty clear. So that's actually adjusting some of my colors a little bit. Lake level has dropped a tiny bit. We are currently at 96.5% full. That is 200.26 feet. Uh, full pull is 201, so we're 0.8 or 0.74 feet low. Not awful, but we're, we've dropped a tiny bit. They're still pulling water like they said they would for uh, Houston's drinking water. But hopefully we're supposed to get some rain. Hopefully that'll bring that water back up because I, I kind of want to keep fishing shallow. Um, talking about kind of the patterns now, kind of how I'm catching fish out here. It's going to be similar to what we talked about two weeks ago. I think that these patterns are going to kind of hold true some of them I'm kind of leaning more on than I was in the last two weeks. Some of them I'm leaning kind of less on. Um, the main one for me, how I'm going to be doing trips out here, um, how I'm going to be catching most of my fish is actually going to be offshore. Um, there's schools starting to show up a little bit more. I, I've seen a couple of the ones that I usually know of, they start showing up in the exact same place as they were before. Last year, years past. Um, and I'm starting to catch them pretty good. Um, where I'm kind of looking at these, I talked on the last uh, video, but these are gonna be kind of related to creek channels. Um, these fish and the bait are gonna be moving from the main lake into the back of these creeks. That's where it's gonna be warmer right now, especially when we get colder water. And we're gonna talk about when we go talk about shallow, but the back of the creeks are gonna be warming up a little bit quicker. That water's a little bit shallower. That's where that bait can feed, and that's where the bass wanna be to be warm, and they also wanna feed. So. Everything is moving to the back of the creeks. These creek channels, uh, the creek channels are what the bass and the bait use to move further back into the creeks a lot of the time. Sometimes they use the bank, but more of the time that we're talking about right now, they're going to be using those creek channels. So I'm looking not in the creek channel here, 
but I'm more so looking on the sides of the creek channel. If you think about it, the lake, this is a reservoir, so it was land before it was flooded. So you have an actual creek. The bottom of that creek is gonna be soft, really, really soft bottom, mucky, sometimes silt, maybe just sand sometimes. But the sides of that creek, if you go walk in your backyard or anything like that, or in a creek in a forest or whatever, you're gonna see that the sides of that creek are gonna be clay because it gets washed out, it gets eroded away. That's gonna be hard bottom. And that's where these fish are sitting. That rock is gonna be holding heat a little bit better. That clay is gonna be holding heat a little bit better than that soft, silty bottom. Bass like having that under them, that's where they're gonna be sitting. So I'm idling along the creek channel and I'm looking at the sides of it. This is gonna be brighter bottom on our side imaging. That's where I'm looking for the bass. But I'm just graphing back and if you wanna practice this, Sam Rayburn's gonna be a whole lot better for this. Toledo Bend's gonna be a whole lot better for this where you can just drive the creek channel in the lake or starting like 25 feet in the creek channel and just drive back. Here it's not so similar. Conroe's a lot tougher, so these are actually gonna be like kind of one single holding spot and it's not for every creek. Um, so I see it a lot more than not on the lower end of the lake. And really where I see it is Atkins, League Line and Rush which is the three southernmost creeks. I will see it. I've got uh, one or two schools around the lighthouse um, and one or two schools around the 1097 bridge. But that's not where I see, that's not where I see most of them. I don't know why I really only see them on the south end of the lake. I think because the bottom's a little bit harder. Um, I always think that there's more fish on the south end of the lake. Um, everything seems a little bit steeper there, so I think fish can get offshore a tiny bit easier. That's where I'm looking for these fish. I'm literally just driving kind of around the creek channels, places where bait is going to hang out. Um, another kind of one that I see, I have one in uh, Little Lake. I, don't, I, I saw some there, but I didn't see them really schooled up today. And that's on a ledge. I mean, that's like literally a ledge on the side of the creek channel. Um, so it doesn't have to be it's kind of flatter. It can be kind of just related to that creek channel. Um, a couple of the schools are actually ledges. Um, a lot of the time, and if you go back like a month or month and a half, we'll talk about kind of how bait is moving, but they're setting up on the deeper side of structure. So the bass are gonna be sitting up on top of the ledge, and a lot of the time it's gonna drop off into the channel, and that's where that bait is gonna sit. A lot of time I want that wind to be pushing the bait up on there, to the shallow part of that spot so the bass can eat them, um, but it doesn't, it doesn't always have to be that. How I'm catching them, um, same baits as the last time. Um, the one I'm really catching them on, one I'm really catching them on the best is gonna be this Rapala. This is a DT16 shad color. Um, I think the Rapala is a lot better uh, at being a finesse kind of colder water crankbait. It's made of like, they used to be made out of balsa. They're made out of plastic now, I'm pretty sure. Um, but these are really, really finesse kind of deep crankbaits. So a lot of time if I get around pressured fish, which a lot of time on Connor we are, that's where the Rapalas seem to do a lot better. This is a DT-16, like I said. Um, I've got this on 12 pound line. And if I know that the fish are being pressured, I'm actually gonna go down. I'm gonna fish the tournament next weekend. And I'm gonna drop my line size down from whatever this is, 12, down to probably 10. Um, I think that that bait gets a lot better action. These fish get super pressure. These are kind of, some of them in obvious spots, but they know that this is fake. So going down to a lighter line size is actually gonna help me get more bites and that's on everything, no matter what. Um, I think that's one thing I'm gonna start really focusing on this year is making sure that I have the best line size for each bait and going down. I feel like sometimes I might get too heavy and I know I catch fish still obviously, but I think I could probably do a little bit better if I go down in line size. We talked about it in the last video, making sure I can make really, really long casts is gonna be really key. This is a Castroy Kranken series. This is a seven foot 10 heavy glass graphite composite rod. This is the only crankbait rod that I throw. Um, allows me to make super, super long casts, bigger kind of reel, cause I'm grinding the gears on this thing like crazy, making sure I can burn it in. Um, the Castaway QC20, I'll put that discount code in the description below if you guys wanna pick them up. But any crankbait will really work. Like I said, this is a Rapala, 5XD, uh, Sixth Sense. I just throw Jenko, I throw Yozuri. 
Um, starting to look into some kind of mega bass ones. This is the one I just have tied on. Uh, I know this one. Really, I know this one works, so I'm not really going to cut it off. But I know there might be better ones, and I know there might be worse ones. You just kind of have to play around. I know that I really like Strike King and uh, Rapala for these. That's going to be usually the first bait that I throw in there. That's going to kind of get them fired up, I feel like. Um, I don't feel like as many people are fishing them as I think or know that they're there <coughs> for those schools. So that's going to be the first thing I throw in there. A lot of the time you're actually going to catch the biggest fish in the first two, or two fish that you catch out of it. Um, I want something that I can get in there quick and keep that school fired up so I can kind of keep catching them. And uh, that's, that's really what I use. If it ends up I catch one or I lose one or something like that, or maybe the wind's not blowing, I really saw that today, is if the wind wasn't blowing, I couldn't catch one on that. That's when I had to slow down. That's when I had to go to the rattle trap. This is the exact same setup we were talking about on the other one. This is just 15 pound line. Um, this is a Yozuri 5 8 ounce rattle and vibe. Um, shad color, same thing as well. And I was yo-yoing this. Um, this was getting me bites when that wind wasn't kind of blowing at all. Like there wasn't even a ripple on the surface and it seemed like the fish were just kind of super spread out. They weren't biting. Yo-yo in this, I cast it out there. I let it sink, engage my reel. And you can either use your reel to impart action or you can use your rod. A lot of time I like using my rod. Um, sometimes I like using my reel, but I just pull it up. I'm in grass right now, but I pull it up. I let it sink and I could feel it through the reel or I could feel it through the rod every time I pull it up that, that that bait is vibrating like a regular rattle trap should. I pull it up just a couple feet up off the bottom and then I let it sink back down and that's usually when that fish is going to pick it up and the next time I pull that's when that fish is going to be there and I just keep doing that all the way back to the boat. Making sure I'm keeping bottom contact with anything uh, is going to be really key. These fish hug the bottom on Lake Conroe. Um, so making sure that I'm keeping this on or near the bottom is super, super important. One thing, one thing that I want to start getting better at this year is throwing an Alabama rig. I have live scope and I think it's not slept on, but I think many people aren't throwing it anymore. Not many people are throwing it anymore, um, but this is the Alabama rig I was throwing. This is actually a Shane's bait. Um, I don't remember which one this is called. I think it's just called Blades of Glory. Five hooks, five baits, uh, five uh, five blades. The one with blades I always think do better uh, in Texas. These are eighth ounce swim bait heads. These are 3.5 inch swim baits. These have a lot of drag. Honestly, I should probably have a 3.2 inch swim bait on here, shad colored. Doesn't really matter what what swim bait you have on there. Um, just like a regular Kai Tech, Strike King Rage swimmer, anything like that will work. I've got this on 20 pound. Um, I honestly might throw it on 25 pound. Uh, I've got it on the biggest rod, or one of the biggest rods I own. And I'm casting it out there and I'm letting it sink and hit the bottom. As soon as it hits the bottom, I'm gonna reel it up. And I wanna keep it probably like two or three feet above the bottom. Um, you never see a school of bay on live scope or ever being on the bottom. So I'm gonna have this above the fish and you'll see him come up and hit it on live scope and you'll feel them. I actually caught two at a time. I'll put that video in here in a second. Oh, one thing that a lot of people do with A-Rigs that I hate is throwing it on braided line. I know these are really expensive. This probably costs $30 right here. I know you don't want to lose them. I know you want to throw hooks that you can bend out, but having braid sucks. Uh, a lot of the time, what I really like about this one, and I didn't know this until I bought it, but the, there's a good one. I think the Strike King one, I haven't tried, but it's made out of titanium. The wire's made out of titanium. And what that does is it allows it to flex. You see a school of bait fish, they kind of, it's, it's not natural for them to just stop. They kind of, you want this to flare. You want it to kind of bend, and then you want it to stop slowly whenever you pulse it. That's what gets the bite, and I think that's really, really key. But when you throw it on braid, and I hate throwing braid on any reaction style bait ever, except like a buzz bait. As, as soon as you stop reeling with that braid, it just stops. And it doesn't flare out, it doesn't kind of do anything. It doesn't look natural, so I hate throwing braid. I know you guys want to get these back if you snag them. 
where these schools are. There's really not much on the bottom, so you can't really snag stuff. Um, I haven't I haven't snagged anything with this today. Like I said, 20 to 20 pound, fi 20 to 25 pound fluorocarbon. This is one of the biggest rods I have. Um, slower gear ratio, same kind of thing with that crankbait. You just don't want to be wearing yourself down. Honestly, I should be throwing this on a 200 or 300 size reel instead of this smaller reel. That's if the wind's blowing a little bit. It was the same thing with kind of the crankbait. I wasn't getting them to bite if there was no wind. <clears throat> if I, if there was wind, uh, or if there wasn't any wind and I had to slow down to them. If there wasn't any wind and I have to slow down for them. Throwing a shaky head. This is a quarter or eighth ounce shaky head. Um, little black worm on here. Just dragging it through there. Same thing. Making sure I have bottom contact. Throwing on a spinning reel with 10 pound fluorocarbon. Um, or... I said in the past the two weeks ago video it was the same kind of thing I'd catch one or I wouldn't catch one and it would pull the school right under the boat this is a cotton cordell jigging spoon this is the smaller version they sell this at Walmart I think it's like two bucks and honestly this thing is caught I've had more hundred fish days on this bait than I have on any other bait um, probably combined no probably not combined but I've had more hundred fish days on this little bait than anything else and this is on a spinning rod, 10 pound fluorocarbon, 10 pound braid, castaway spinning rod. All I'm doing with this is I'm literally just dropping it below the boat. I see them on my 2D and on my live scope. So I see where these fish are. I'm not casting this, I'm just dropping it. That's, all, that's why it's called a jigging spoon. I drop it below the boat and I just hop it up and down. And a lot of time if they're hot, if they're gonna bite it, they're gonna bite it before it even hits the bottom. And if they don't, I don't wanna keep jigging on top of them. I'll just reel it all the way up, get them active, and then I'll just drop it right back down into them and they'll bite it. Um, I have actually caught some better fish on this one, and this thing is tiny. Like that's like a little of the smallest bait I probably own right now. Uh, the other bait I don't have, I actually lost it, is a Ned Rig. Um, Ned Rig, very similar to that shaky head. You know, just throwing it out there and kind of dragging it back super slow. Um, great bait under pre a lot of fishing pressure. One thing I, I wanted to start throwing, and I did catch a couple on, was actually this free rig. This is like a drop shot, a sliding weight. I've got a bobber stopper to protect my knot. I've got this on a five, four or five watt worm hook. And then this is a Berkeley power bait, um, curly tail worm. I think it's eight inches or nine inches or something like that. Um, just to try to throw something different in there. I think a lot of the time they're focused on shad so much, we throw all these crankbaits in there. And sometimes you have to slow down to get them to bite something else so you can get them fired back up and keep catching them. 20 pound line, this is on a seven foot three extra heavy castaway skeleton, um, fast gear ratio reel on this one. That's for the offshore fish. Um, when you're fishing for them, you wanna make sure that you get the right cast. Obviously I have 360, I have live scope. I can kind of see them as they're moving each time I make a cast. That's what I love about the crankbait is every single time they move, I can get in there really quick and keep catching them. Um, one thing you might have to do is you might have to put a couple of waypoints with your side imaging when you're idling and finding them the first time. And if I stop catching them, I have no problem starting the motor back up, graphing right over top of where those fish were and putting more waypoints. You driving over top of it won't hurt it at all. That'll actually stir up the bait, and you might actually start catching them again, um, and you're going to make sure you're making the right cast. So I have live scope in 360, but that's not necessary to catch these fish. Just having side imaging at the console and a map up at the front, or even just a map at the back, you want to make sure you kind of know where you are. Um, that's what's really key. The other pattern that I'm going to talk about is going to be fishing rock. Um, we talked about it in the last one. I was trying to catch bigger fish doing it and I think that that 62 to 60 degree mark is kind of changes a lot of things I feel like fish kind of stop biting things that they should uh, I kind of think they start to get a little bit more lethargic they don't smack the crud out of things like they were so if we end up getting it to warm back up I'm gonna go back to this swim bait this is the six cents sweep this is on an eight aught three eighths ounce weight, flashy swimmer. This is kind of like a weedless underspin. I can throw it around any kind of main lake rock um, and just kind of reel it in. You just cast it out and wind it in. I want to keep it up a little bit higher. I don't want to be bumping rocks with this thing. I, I like keeping it up high. I have given it getting some followers on it. Like I said, today's pretty cold, so I was getting followers on it. 
So that's what I'm gonna throw. A little square bill in there. A little square bill on there. This is different than a regular side, regular square bill. This is a flat-sided square bill. Similar to that rappel we were talking about before, this is gonna be a lot more finesse. Wintertime fish aren't as active, bait fish aren't as active. They're not gonna be swimming like crazy. So having something that's got a little bit tighter wobble is gonna be more key. This is a six cents finesse F4. The other one that I actually like more than this one, I don't have a tight on right now, is the Spro Little John. I'm throwing these in shad, shad bait, shad. I'm throwing these in shad colors um, to try to catch these fish. 12 to 15 pound fluorocarbon. Um, I've got this on a 6.9 medium rod. This is my square bill rod. Crot okay, slow gear ratio, and I'm banging this thing into rocks. I boat positioning is gonna be really key in this. If I'm going around bridges or if I'm going down riprap. These square bills don't go very deep. Two, three, four feet maybe. That rock doesn't come out very far and sometimes these rocks can be steep. They drop off pretty quick. So making sure that I throw out there and I can parallel whatever I'm fishing is gonna be really important. Um, I'm also, I'm gonna do it not only with the boat but I'm gonna do it with the rod. Uh, if I cast out there, I'm gonna have to move and position my rod tip towards the shallower part of it or exactly where I want that bait's line to be. I want it to be bumping rocks the entire way back. You get a lot more bites when you're bumping rocks with the bill than anything else, um, than just like kind of reeling it at open water. That's why we have square bills. They're designed to bump into rocks. Those can be really important. Other things, I haven't really thrown it as much, um, but jerk baits are gonna be pretty important this time of year. Let me pull one out. I haven't thrown one as much, but jerk baits are gonna be pretty important when it starts getting colder and colder. These are the best uh, kind of cold water imitations of shad. This is a Mega Bass Vision 110. This bait is $25.99. Definitely worth every penny. Those other jerk baits stink. Um, they still catch fish, the other ones, but this is the best one, no doubt about it. Um, throwing this on 12 pound line, um, same thing as before with that crankbait. The lighter line, I'm going to get more action. And it's important to throw this on kind of new line. Um, a lot of time, your, your older fluorocarbon will have memory in it. And what's really important about this jerkbait... What's really important about this jerkbait when you work it, is you jerk it on slack line and it sits. And if you have old line, there's going to be memory in it your bait's gonna start moving. That's not what you want. You want your bait to be sitting perfectly still. That's why it's called a suspending jerk bait. So having newer line is actually gonna be pretty important on this, and I think that's a lot of the reason why people don't really love this thing. I still work it pretty quick uh, to where it might not matter if I have old line or not, but you jerk it on slack line. Um, I might have to I might have to put a video in, uh, in the top right so you guys can go watch how to fish a jerk bait. Um, but this is on 12 pound line, seven foot medium rod, uh, faster gear ratio reel, uh, Corrado. That's gonna be great up around the rocks and stuff as well. Bridges, bridges are gonna be really, really important for me this year. I might not always catch the biggest fish, but I feel like they replenish constantly. So you can go fish behind somebody, fish them when, they're, when it's tough out. Um, if I feel like I it's too cold, fish aren't biting, I'm gonna have to slow down. If it's too cold and fish aren't biting, I'm gonna have to slow down. That's when I'm gonna go to the shaky head. Just drag it through those rocks. It's really important this time of year, especially when it starts getting colder. Like I said, that 60 degree mark is really, really important for me. Fish seem like they really change what they're doing around that 60 degree mark. I'm gonna have to slow down. When I fish this shaky head, I call it counting rocks. We've talked about it with everything so far. Fish relate to the bottom. I want to make sure that I am bouncing off every single rock with this head. By the end of the day, there probably shouldn't be any paint left on this thing. I was fishing this in brush piles. I haven't been fishing this around rock, but there shouldn't be any paint left on this thing if we're dragging it correctly. That's how I know I'm fishing where the fish are. Um, they're, like I said, they're super lethargic. They don't want to move very far right now to get some food, so bringing the bait to them is going to be really important. <clears throat> 
the other pattern, my, the second most in pattern, the second most important pattern for me is gonna be grass fishing up shallow. I'm up north right now. Fish have been really moving into the back of these creeks. And the two baits that I'm throwing, if it's warmer and it's kind of more main lake, and I feel like there's big fish in there, is I'm gonna try to get away with the six cents sweep, that same one we were talking about before. I'm really just trying to catch big fish. It's been colder, so I haven't been throwing it as much. So it's been colder, so I haven't been throwing it as much. Because it's been colder, I've been picking up the rattle trap. This is like the prime example of a flat sided bait. This is winter time, fall, winter time, it's pre spawn, spawn, bait. If I only had to pick one bait to fish up shallow, it'd pretty much be a rattle trap, I'm pretty sure. This thing, I can cover so much water with it. It catches big fish, um, and it's a great imitator. You, these fish, even though they're lethargic, this bait will come right in front of them, and they have to make like a millisecond decision whether they're gonna eat it or not, and this rattle trap is a really, really great way to catch a lot of fish. I've got more, more fish shallow on this today than I have on anything else combined. Um, and I've also caught bigger fish on this today. This is the same Yozuri Rattle and Vibe 5 8 ounce. Same exact setup. 710 to 7 710 to 7 foot 6 would probably be better. 15 to 17 pound line on this. I like throwing a slower gear ratio and I like reeling really fast, but you could probably throw a medium gear ratio and probably be just fine. I cast this out there and I want to be taking the grass. I cast it out there and I have my rod tip up. You can see this is exactly what we we're talking about with the kind of square bill. All right, the camera messed up, so I don't really know what it got. This is gonna be my favorite bait to throw up shallow right now. Better than a chatter bait, better than a, a swim bait. But the swim bait is still gonna be really good. This thing is that 3.8 inch small flashy swimmer. It's a three aught hook, uh, a much smaller version of that big bait that I was throwing. Swim baits are gonna be the most natural by far. Um, and I think they're gonna catch the biggest fish and the most fish. There's a lot, a lot of pressure on here. You can, there's a lot of teeth marks on this right now. Same exact kind of thing. I'm not reeling it nearly as fast. I'm throwing a little bit heavier line, like a seven foot three rod. I'm casting it out there. I'm still taking that grass and kind of pulling it free, but I'm not winding it nearly as fast. Most important thing about grass fishing can be the location. Um, where I'm catching these shallow fish is gonna be in the back of creeks and coves. So, Right here, I'm in kind of a bay right now. I just kind of pulled over on the side of the lake to film. What I want is like we are talking about before, these fish are gonna be in the warmest water possible. They're gonna to try to be. So I'm going into the back of a cove where it starts to flatten out. I want the grass to be flat and I don't want an edge. It seems like I'm not really catching them on the edge as much. Um, that's where I feel like I've been doing the best. That's where we've been catching the bigger fish and more fish. Uh, and I always think it's important to have wind coming into that creek or cove, straight into it. Once you get to the back of it, the waves are kind of kind of dissipate. It's still gonna be windy. And I think fish just move in with the wind and move out when it's not blowing in there. So always, no matter what I'm fishing, pretty much, except for the next thing, I want wind on it. Um, bridges, shallow rock, offshore schools, ripping a rattle trap, I want wind on it. The only thing that I don't want wind on, and we were just talking about it, is especially if it gets colder, I'm gonna pick up a punch rig. This is 65 pound braid, a one ounce weight with a rodent on here, rodent or beaver style uh, bait. Um, this happens to be six cents, but I love Reaction Innovations beaver. Black and purple, three aught flipping hook, Two bobber stops. This is a 711 extra heavy. This isn't even a rod that is castaway, but I think it's a good rod. 711 extra heavy. This is like a parabolic rod. I don't want wind on this. Where I'm punching is I'm punching in matted hydrilla. Matted hydrilla means that that hydrilla grew up to the surface and started growing kind of sideways. It's very similar to trees. Is once they reach, once they get up and they start covering more area, they kill the trees next to them. They kill the grass next to them. So it creates a canopy underwater. On sunny days, that's going to heat up and those fish are going to sit right underneath it. Today's pretty cloudy. I don't feel like they're going to be really in it as much. They're probably going to be on the edges. But this is one thing I'm going to start trying. I haven't done really great with this yet. 
but I think we're getting a lot more grass and I think on sunny days this will be pretty good on the edges of grass. Very not similar to where we were just talking about in the back of a cove. This is going to be kind of more main lake stuff or maybe at the front of the creek um, where we have actual edges of that hydrilla. Going back and talking about the rattle trap and the swim bait, three different types of grass, hydrilla, coontail, and eelgrass. I'm catching them on the rattle trap out of coontail the best and then eelgrass and hydrilla are second. Coontail has been the best for me um, for like the past month or so. The other, the other pattern that I'm going to talk about um, is going to be going into these docks and flipping them or throwing that swim bait. Um, same thing, we're going we're gonna to have to probably get away from that swim jig now. It's probably getting a little too cold. Still might try it every once in a while, that white swim jig that I talked about in previous videos. But going Going and throwing a flipping jig, 3 8 ounce, half ounce, black, blue, and purple jig, big hook, Chigger, Berkeley Chigger Craw trailer on there, flipping it on these docks, these docks that I'm looking at, similar to that grass. I'm going to where that water's warmer. These are going to be docks in the back of a creek, back of a cove. Maybe the water's a little bit dirtier, that's going to warm up a little bit more. And I'm just flipping it. I like flipping it on the outside corner post. You might have to start flipping it up under these docks. I'm actually starting to stray away from docks now. Once it starts getting pretty cold, I like going to fish a lot more rock and a lot more grass and kind of get away from docks. But there's still fish there. Dead end canals, that's where the water heats up the quickest. Uh, um, I'm also going to be throwing that swim bait that we were talking about before, the smaller one. I'm also going to be throwing that smaller swim bait up around these docks as well. Um, anywhere where there's kind of coontail kind of growing in between it but warmer water is gonna be better for here the rest of the year um, doesn't always have to be the like I don't just drive around and I go look for the warmest water but I do think water warmer water helps some days I've actually caught them in the coldest water I've found but I think that's because the wind is blowing up on it um, and that's one thing I want to talk about I don't care if it's blowing its butt off if it's freezing cold, this is when the big ones bite. Uh, I think it gets colder and their brains don't work as good. They, they don't really know what's fake and what's not. They're not thinking. So this is when big ones bite. And if I find something shallow that's good looking, especially rock, and it's got wind on it, pretty good bit of wind, I am going to fish it with either jerk bait or that square bill or a, a different crankbait that will just get a tiny bit deeper than that one. And I'm going to fish it. I think that this is this is how I've caught my biggest fish. This is how I have the biggest fish pattern in the wintertime. Is going to fish literally just windblown stuff that looks good. Main lake. Actually, it doesn't even have to be main lake. Anywhere where wind is on it, I think is key. And that's literally key with any pattern we just talked about. Except for the dead end canals, flipping docks, and flipping the edges of the grass uh, into the mats. Straight into that grass. Uh, wind is going to be key. Uh, we're always still looking for bait. Um, well, well, there's not gonna be bass. There's not gonna be bass there if there's no bait there. They're not moving very far right now, so there has to be bait in the area. I'm either going into a creek and I'm seeing seeing bait um, up shallow, or I'm seeing bait offshore near where my schools are. If I don't see bait, I'm not fishing. I'm just gonna keep moving on and keep going. Today, I've literally fished the entire lake. Um, I'm up north right now, but I started fishing pretty much the dam. So I fish a lot of spots out here. If you guys are still struggling, um, trying to make these as, as informative as I can without like literally just giving you my spots. Um, but if you want to get out with me, um, learn your electronics, get out, learn bass fishing, figure out what you're doing wrong. I, I, I zero sometimes out here too. And I, I've struggled a lot when I first started learning how to fish out here. So if you guys need help, need assistance, don't know what you're doing wrong, give me a call, 713-835-2887. Um, I appreciate you guys. Like I said, I'm going to have all those discounts in the description below. Um, but if you guys have any comments, concerns, feedback, please let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in two.